at this place in history. We're in South Burlington looking across the Winooski River toward Colchester with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, you've called our attention fairly recently to several pieces having to do with the naming of things, and another one of those brings us here this week. Absolutely, Mike. So uh, we are uh, next to Lime Kiln Road. So uh, a lime kiln is a device used to make lime. And what does lime come from? Lime comes from limestone. Um, we have a fair amount of it around here. So burning it, submitting limestone to high temperatures breaks it down into lime. And this is an ancient practice, right? It goes back to the Romans. It goes into mortar and it goes into plaster and it's used to augment soil and fields. It's used in soap. It's used in toothpaste. It's used in water filters. It's used in refining uh, coal gas into gas for used in, in homes, which is what was used in Burlington in the 19th century. And a lime kiln can be as simple as a pile of of rocks in kind of a, a dome shape. And this then could get really, really fancy right. into a huge factory. And you had one of those uh, just about right here, complete with quarries. Absolutely. One of the largest, if not the largest, um, commercial lime manufacturing in Vermont was on this site. And by I say this site, you know, we've got Lime Kiln Road over to, to my left yep. and your, your left here. And we're standing on a site where there was a, a lime operation across the road across the river, on the other side of the river. For over 150 years, there were lime kilns um, on this site. This one was started right after the War of 1812 mm. by Jabez Penniman, the uh, second husband of Ethan Allen's widow, mm. Fanny, <laughs> Fanny Allen. Um, and he, he got a fair amount of land through that marriage. And he and then um, heirs operated it up until the 1850s and then just through lots of various, uh, you know, corporate buyouts and whatnot, it kept growing. There's still one quarry. It's behind us. It's behind that, that fence over there that yep. you can see. The rest have all been filled in and things built over them. And there were even really big um, factories on the other side of the river that were here until 1990. And it was in operation until 1971. So I don't, there may be viewers who are watching this who worked in this lime manufacturing. Um, it, it was producing a tremendous amount of lime and um, near the end of its operation, um, it had really large government contracts. This particular company lost its uh, contract and with the, with the government in the early 70s, and so that caused it to go out of business in 1971. It's estimated there's almost 160 lime kilns mm. sites in Vermont. <laughs> so they're, they're all over the place. So for anybody that uh, might think they may have had a lime kiln in their community, there are other lime kiln roads, of course. How can they perhaps learn about either them or about this very large operation here? Certainly go to your local library. Um, there's a couple of relatively recent books on uh, the lime industry or lime and iron industry mm -hmm. in Vermont by a, an author named Victor Rolando. So look that up. Come visit us at the Vermont Historical Society. We have a lot of records on this carving out a piece of the rock and baking it in a lime kiln at this place in history.